here are five new features inside of Photoshop that you need to know about. Now within this update, there are a few additional tools that I wanna make sure that you have inside of your toolbar before we begin. To find these tools, if you don't already have them enabled, we can go to the bottom of our toolbar inside of Photoshop, and you might see an icon like this, or if you click and hold, you might see this little three dots icon. Either way, just make sure to go to edit toolbar. In the window that appears, you can see I have two extra tools, which are some new additions inside of Photoshop. Since these are mapped to shortcuts that already exist within the toolbar, I'm going to move these tools to be nested within those related shortcuts. That way everything is easy to access. For example, I'll take the selection brush tool and since it is the L shortcut, I'm going to move it within my lasso tools by clicking and dragging it over like so. Next, I'll do the same thing with my adjustment brush tool, going down to the brush tools, clicking and dragging that adjustment brush tool within the brush tools like so. Now, finally, before we exit this window, make sure that you also have the generate image button enabled here so that it is visible at the bottom of your toolbar here. This is something we'll talk about later in this video. But now that our toolbar is set up, let's click on done and start with our first new feature. This first new feature is called the selection brush tool. And since I just nested it within my lasso tools, I'll go ahead and access that tool here. The way this tool works is very similar to a quick mask, but with a little bit less messing around to get the job done. Ultimately, it allows you to paint a brush stroke and that brush stroke will define a selection on your image. Rather than needing to use any complicated selection tools that might feel a bit overwhelming, we could just use a brush tool, paint over what we want, and that is pretty much it. You can use this to remove backgrounds or create selective adjustments. For example, let's say I want to go and fade this image into transparency. With the add to option enabled, opacity at 100%, and I'm going to click into the brush settings and make sure my hardness is at 0%. That way I have a really soft transition for my brush. With all those settings looking good, I'll scale up that brush and just paint over the area of the image that I want to select. This highlight defines our selected area. If we were to make an adjustment or add a layer mask, this pink highlight would be visible in our adjustment. Since I want this area to be transparent in my image, I'm going to invert this selected area by clicking the invert option within the contextual taskbar. This will switch that highlighted area around. And now adding this to a layer mask to remove the background, we have now made that original area that we painted over transparent and that adjustment has been applied onto our layer mask. We can of course update this layer mask as we would like painting white or black to refine it. But if you're unfamiliar with layer masks and how they work, make sure to check out this video right here to learn more about that. So ultimately the selection brush tool allows you to create more general selections by just painting on your image and you don't have to deal with any selection tools. This is kind of like an even easier version of the quick mask feature that already existed inside of Photoshop. So if you find yourself using quick masks pretty often, you will probably get a lot of use from this tool. Next up, we have the adjustment brush tool, which has had a few different updates in the last few months, but a further updated version is now available. Since I nested that tool within my brush tools, I'll click and hold on the brush tool icon and go to my adjustment brush tool. Similar to our previous tool, wherever we paint on our canvas with the brush will define an area to be adjusted. But rather than creating a selection, the adjustment brush tool will apply an adjustment wherever we paint. The first step in this process is choosing an adjustment that you want to use. For example, in the contextual taskbar or up in the options bar, we can choose between a variety of adjustment layers that we would otherwise find in the adjustments panel. For example, I'll click on curves. Now we can choose our brush settings and I'll choose a soft round brush. That way my adjustment will blend smoothly into the unaffected areas of my edit. Now with the add to option enabled, opacity and flow at 100%, we can now go and paint over what we want to edit in our photo. This will apply your brush settings onto the layer mask to define the visible areas for that adjustment. It will also apply an automatic adjustment to the adjustment layer that we chose previously up in the options bar here. Since you likely won't want this base adjustment, you can just click on the reset option and then add your own adjustments as you would like 
to this area. Now, what a lot of people get hung up on with layer masks is how to refine them. And with the adjustment brush tool, it makes life pretty easy because we don't have to think about our foreground color. Instead, we can just choose the add to option or subtract from option. In this case, let's say I want to remove some of this adjustment. I can click on the subtract brush here and now just paint over the areas on my image that I no longer want to edit with this particular adjustment. This automatically updates our mask for us and life is a lot easier. So this is a super beginner friendly tool when you want to create selective adjustments inside of Photoshop. Now, before we move on to the next tool, there is one final way to make the adjustment brush tool even more useful, and that is with the apply object button. By clicking the apply object button in the contextual taskbar, it allows you to highlight anything in your image to automatically select it. This is a feature that's available within the object selection tool as well. Clicking on something that you would like to target, such as this subject, for example, this will automatically add or remove that area from your current layer mask, depending on whether you have the subtract or add to option enabled. In this case, I'll choose the add to option and then click on my subject. And now you can see on the layer mask, the subjects outline has been added to that mask. So now I can apply a more specific adjustment just to the subject. The third new feature inside of Photoshop is some updated shape tool settings that I think are a super helpful addition that I've been waiting a long time for. With any of our shape tools selected here, I'll go ahead and create a new shape like so. Letting go, you'll now notice that in the contextual taskbar, we have all of our shape settings really easily accessible. Previously, we would have to go up to the options bar or go into the properties panel to edit all of these settings. But now we can do it right here on our canvas, such as changing the color of this shape. We can change the outline, change that outline style, as well as round corners by changing the radius settings here. Now, unlike in the properties panel where we have a link icon to link or unlink all of the roundness values for our shapes corners, in the properties panel, if you want to edit individual corners, you can type in the values individually, or you can type in a global value up here at the top option. So for example, 50, and that will now add a 50 pixel radius to this particular shape's corners. Now, the other settings that we have here is a duplicate shape setting. So if I click on that, it's going to duplicate that shape layer. However, I don't really find this super useful since the Alt or Option key gets this job done a little bit faster, in my opinion. For example, if I wanted to duplicate this layer, I could just grab the Move tool, hold Alt or Option, and then duplicate this shape as many times as I would want just while holding Alt or Option, and I never have to click any additional buttons. So personally, that's just what I prefer doing, but this is a helpful new feature if you're not aware of those additional shortcuts. The fourth new feature inside of Photoshop is something that I'm actually shocked didn't exist previously in the program, but it now supports the ability to create bullets and numbered lists within the type tool. So for example, accessing the type tool, I can click on my image and I'll go ahead and add a bullet point. And I'll go example, press enter, and it's going to create an additional bullet point. I'll press enter again and it creates an additional bullet point. You get the idea. Now the same thing applies for numbers as well. If I type in one, go example, press enter, it's going to create two and then three and four and so on. Previously, you would have to do this manually or add glyphs to create different bullet points. So this is a huge addition that should have existed a long time ago, but I'm happy that it is finally here. Now, the fifth and final addition inside of Photoshop is the new integration of the text to image feature with the Firefly Image 3 model. Now, earlier in the video, I showed you that generate image button, and that is what we're going to access now. Clicking the generate image button at the bottom of the toolbar, this will open up the text to image prompt window. Here we can type in anything that we would like to generate a new image from scratch on our canvas. Now, this is something that I've already covered a little bit more in depth in this video right here, where I compare the new versus old Firefly models. But in a nutshell, if you want to type in your own text prompt, you can do so here or click on any of the prompt inspiration options here to guide your result. For example, I'll click on this fruit option here, and then we could update this prompt as needed. Instead of fruits, I'll put vegetables and leave all of the other settings the same. I'll go ahead and click on generate. 
This will take our text prompt and all of the other settings we created to create three new variations in the style of our prompt. And it will create a brand new image that takes up your entire canvas and it will all be added onto its own layer here. Again, if you wanna learn more about how this feature works and comparing the old versus new Firefly models, I'll leave a link below this video. So those are the five new features inside of Photoshop. And I would love to hear what you think about these new updates. Do you think that these are useful new features? Are some of them redundant? Do you love it, hate it? I would love to hear all about your opinions in the comments below. But with that, I'll see you next time. Thank you.